our Pokemon catching background noise. Okay. <laughs> All right. So tonight we're just going to kind of go back to the basics with our human design chart. Um, for those who are new here or haven't been able to um, attend a presentation yet, um, this will be just kind of covering the basics again. So I do have the chat up. So if you guys have any questions during um, the presentation, please put them in the chat. Be more than happy to answer them. Um, got a super cool. Um, what what do I have at the end? Y'all, please excuse me as well. I'm gonna try my hardest. I currently have third trimester oatmeal brain. <laughs> And so sometimes the words that I speak out, they might not make sense. So just bear with me. But at the end, I do have a little surprise um, about when it comes to human design. Um, super new, super exciting. Um, yes. So what is human design? Again, this is like our logical system that brings together three principles, which is the I Ching astrology, or sorry, four, five, the I Ching astrology, Kabbalah, the chakra system, and quantum physics as well. So your human design chart um, is also what they call a body graph. Um, it's really calculated using, same thing with astrology, your birth date, time, and place to really reveal your genetic design. So I say all the time, this is literally the chart that we need when we leave the hospital with our children, because we can find out so much about our energy dynamic in human design, our sleeping patterns, our eating ha benefits, our digestive benefits, and as well as like our learning habits um, and how we respond emotionally in this world. You didn't miss, a, you, I've just gotten started. So I'm like, on, literally like on the second slide. So came in at a good time. <laughs> um, so yes, just kind of showing you your body's consciousness and how we can kind of use it to, to the best of our ability as like a decision making tool when we go about it in life. So human design, it provides two main sets of tools. You have your personality um, type, and this component is like what makes up your design, right? So what you see on the right side column of your human design chart, this is your conscious or your intentional things that we act out. Um, these are the things that we're mostly aware of. So this is kind of like your awake and your watchful ways of behaving in your personality. Um, the numbers that you see listed in those columns, those represent the gate. And therefore, it's a very specific trait of yours as well. Um, so then the second main of tools is our minds. So our authority or how we can make decisions that are always going to be right for the way that your energy dynamic interacts with the world. Um, Make sure I said that right. Yes. So in human design, we kind of say the mind is like a passenger in a car. So its correct role is to sit back and enjoy the ride, not compete with the driver, which is our body, um, for control of the steering wheel. So the human design system tools help the mind to be more comfortable in the back seat. And over time, as you kind of like experiment with them, kind of play around with what works best for you, your mind is going to be able to be more of like observing um, and you're enjoying your life instead of um, allowing yourself to overthink, right? So um, one of the things I try to keep in mind is that our mind is a tool, right? Um, just like it is with... Um, a pencil, you know, and there are times where we do have to put that pencil down, right? Um, give ourselves a break. Same thing with our mind. 
So some of the things that I've personally discovered with human design is how I best channel and receive messages from spirit, just from the centers in my human design chart that I have open, or as well as what I have defined that I can rely on internally. And then the, um, the areas that I have open that I can rely on for the receiving part. Um, as well as the best way to align my energy, how I can read the energy of a room. Also, how other types read energy of the room, improving my quality of sleep, um, any of these unconscious fears that I may not have been aware of um, that are potentially just holding me back from really truly using my strategy and authority, um, as well as looking at my children's chart and understanding how they learn and understand how they view the world. It's made a huge difference because I also homeschool. So there's a lot. <laughs> if you know, you know, there's a lot when it comes to human design. But today we're just going to kind of keep it with the meat and potatoes of human design. It's going to be your type, your strategy, authority and your profile. So um, if you are pretty active within the human design channel here on Discord, um, I do like to put a lot of, um, you know, encouraging notes or just something along the facts that go with your profile, your type, um, and how to best use like your strategy and authority as well. So we have nine jewels within the human design chart. These are our centers. So depending on where where you have defined centers, this is where you create, versus where you have undefined centers or open centers is where you receive energy. So these centers are like the chakra centers. Um, they have these opening and closing valves, per se, where it's kind of like regulating the flow of energy. And so these nine centers are set within the frame, framework of 36 channels. And at the end of those channels, there are 64 gates. And this kind of determines like your cut and polish, right? This is what makes you super unique. Um, this is kind of how you express this energy, how you turn it into perception, human function, awareness, how you use your instincts. Um, so everyone has the same centers and the same 64 gates in the same place. Um, but it ultimately just determines on what gates you have that are open and what gates that you have defined. And so if you notice on your chart, go to this one right here, you've got two columns. You've got a left column and you've got a right column. And um, this is what I was talking about with the numbers here, as you can see. So that first number is going to represent the gate. That second number after the decimal decimal is going to be the line that that gate is on with involving the I Ching. And then the planet it represents. So um, one of the cool things that we kind of figured out too is on your conscious side, so your personality side, these gates, every single gate within human design um, has its own astrology sign, so its own zodiac sign. Um, and you'll notice that it matches up with your signs um, in astrology. So um, this seven right here, this seven sun gate, the seven has its own very distinct astrology sign, and that would actually represent your sun sign in astrology as well. So super cool to look at. I know I'm talking a mile a minute, but is everyone good? Does anyone have any questions so far? Oh, all right, we'll keep rolling. So again, as I was saying, defined center or undefined center. Um, thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> so a defined center is colored in and it has at least 
one channel coming off of it. Um, and this is typically a function that you have that's very fixed and consistent. Um, so it is a constant part of you. So these are the parts that you can kind of always count on. Um, and these are areas that you can always rely on harnessing your energy. So an undefined center here that's not colored in, um, this is specific energy is not consistent. And this is a part of you where you are receiving from the outside world. Um, but it's also very malleable. It's very flexible, um, very much open to influence. Um, so when you do have an undefined area in your human design chart, I also like to kind of pay attention and see um, if there's anywhere that you have possible conditioning from either, um, you know, from childhood to now, just in the type times where you know, we're constantly learning and we're constantly um, allowing people to influence us. So when we think about what an undefined center does or an open center, so an open center, um, as you can see the difference here, undefined, you're still gonna have some active gates within this center. Open, all gates are completely open in this center, so. Um, in terms of our work, this can kind of really take in a client's energy, um, but also like where you may even feel like you're amplifying energy or you're possibly mirroring it back, um, especially when it comes to having an undefined or open um, solar plexus center, emotional center. Really want to sit with you can kind of determine what is your emotion and what's possibly somebody else's emotion that you are interacting with. So again, like I said, when we think about conditioning, whether it's like societal or specific people in our lives, um, you know, the cultural norms, the generational norms, whatever it is, this is why some conditioning ultimately turns us into this like not self, right? So, the reason why I think human design is so amazing with all of us on this path within our inner self is that there may be times where you can kind of go back and look at specific areas in your chart that ultimately just conditioned you into this not self as to now being someone where you're kind of shedding that away and um, just becoming more in tune of who you really are and who you are meant to be um, within this soul path that we're here. Hey, Rita. Hey, Janice. So we've got five types, right? Five types and how they interact and engage in life, right? So your type is determined by which centers you have defined and which other centers they connect to. So your type depends on the nine centers that are in color. So it's going to reveal some of the most insightful information about you. So first up, we have manifestors. Do we have any manifestors um, in the chat? Let us know. Awesome. Okay. Ooh, okay. Awesome. So, do we have any more? Okay. So, we got three so far. Manifesting generator. Okay. So, we've got Lucky, Miss Key, Ray. So, manifestors. You guys make up about 8% of the population. You guys are the trailblazers. You guys are here to start something and make a big impact. Um, so you, manifestors, you guys are the only type that initiates and creates momentum around ideas to really get people on board, AKA that's why you guys are called the manifestors, right? So it's really, really crucial
around you. So I think about this in a relationship dynamic, and I also think about this in a career form, right? When you, before you are ready to make bold moves, um, it's really important to avoid any type of outside energy that's going to kind of create this resistance because your energy can be um, just so powerful that when you're not informing people what you're doing, it can just throw them off. Um, my manifestors, you guys thrive on independence. Big thrive on independence. Um, you guys were the kids that it just, I don't, it just made you like kind of cringe a little bit when somebody's telling you what to do, right? And it's just the smallest things. Um, you know, I really like to think about my manifestors in a group sitting down where they're doing, we're doing icebreaker things and you guys are like, ugh, you know, like name one fact about you. And you're like, no, <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> so what makes you a manifester is that you have an undefined or open sacral center. Um, and you have, um, a defined, um, throat center and this throat center is going to be connected to either your heart, your emotions, or your root. And so this is kind of what makes you have this drive to have this like internal imp impulse to your ideas and visions. Um, and the reason why you have this throat defined is because it's really important for you to talk about it. This manifestors is how you can ultimately manifest anything you want in life. As long as you're speaking it out in some way. Um, if you can tell, talk to somebody, if you have someone that you can trust. Um, if this is a time for you to get a podcast and be speaking all of this, this is how you're able to kind of let other people's let other people know what you're doing, what you're about. Um, and ultimately you're going to see this ultimately manifest because you guys have some big energy. Um, y'all walk into a room, your energy is felt immediately, immediately. Um, this can kind of typically throw some people off sometimes, but once they kind of get into this natural, you know, sifting process, you find that people really, really magnetize to you. You guys are very much designed to be bold. Um, anytime my manifestors, y'all feel anger, um, this is when you know that your not self is kicking in, that something is kind of going against your flow. Um, this is kind of when you feel like you're not making progress or that. Um, you know, somebody is not listening to you. This is when you can kind of tell is that <laughs> someone's, um, you know, not listening, um, or, you know, something feels off. So it means just kind of take a step back and, uh, reanalyze. Let's see what's going on to kind of get you back in that ebb and flow energy, right? <laughs> because they see me as a threat or I do too much. Yes. Yes, I can definitely understand that when it comes to being a manifester. But I'm telling you right now, you are also someone who these same people who are saying you're too much are coming to you for advice all the time. They want to know your input because you have great input. And um, even though they potentially see you as a threat, they want to know everything about you. They want to know your ins and outs. Um, so yeah, something to experiment with my manifestors is read the energy of other people and really truly sit down and think about what they're coming to you for. Very important. Very important. But where people be at when I need advice. <laughs> your projectors. Okay, Lucky, your projectors. They're the ones to go to, but you have to inform them. You have to inform them. Um, that's kind of like their, their light bulb to go because projectors, they hold the wisdom. 
they hold the wisdom. So speaking of, next up, I've got my projectors. So my projectors, they represent 20% of the uh, population in human design. So unlike the manifestors or the generators or the many gens, projectors um, don't have that defined sacral center. Same with manifestors, though, um, which means that they don't have this consistent internal energy source. So projectors very, very, very much known for um, their deep, profound wisdom. They have like the whole scope of a situation. They have the whole view. And this unique ability that they have to kind of see and understand others in a way that just brings so much profound clarity and insight. Um, these are the coaches. These are the advisors. These are the consultants. Um, Mind you, very much different with manifestors and manifesting generators um, and generators. We kind of speak our own language, right? We are more so about um, finding the shortcuts in life or finding the quickest way to get there. Manifestors language is, mm -mm, they know the whole scope. So interacting with the projector, you're going to get a lot of wisdom and a lot of insight but they speak a different language. So keep that in mind. Their aura is very focused and absorbing. This is why it's very crucial that projectors are handling um, their energy with much care and caution because they're absorbing. Um, this is allowing them to really get into other people's energies and see what's going on. So while generators, we, um, generators are designed to respond, manifestors to initiate, and then we've got our hybrids, right? Our manifesting generators to inform as well as to respond, right? Projectors are here to wait for their invitation um, and wait for that recognition because this is not about aligning themselves with the correct opportunities and people. Um, this is more about, um, understanding that this waiting strategy is for their value and for the value of their energy, because their energy is like a bank, right? You wake up with a budget, um, and when you run out, you run out. They do not have the sacral center to just generate more energy. Um, and this is why, especially in a world where we typically live in a generator world, right? It's that nine to five. Um, it's that, um, I mean, we just need constant, consistent energy, right? But when a projector finds themselves in the right place with the right people, they're valued um, and they have their boundaries in place. They can contribute their wisdom and they make a huge, huge difference in this world. Huge difference. Yes. So as a group, projectors are very complex, um, very well equipped to read and guide every other energy type. OK. Um, this can kind of be looked at as a blessing and a curse because it allows them to experience very focused empathy, but also makes them very vul vulnerable for conditioning and for burnout. Um, so. They have the ultimate gift of how energy should be applied. Um, and this can kind of come off in, a, in an off way um, for the other auras because, again, it's just a different language. We see the world in a different way. We um, take in the energy of the world in a different way. Um, so like one, one example I like to give with this is that, um, my projector is good at reading. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Is that each of us have a jar, right? Or if you were to imagine you have a kid with every different type, right? Um, and this kid is coming up to you with their manifestor jar, their generator jar, 
their Manny Gen jar, and then you have a projector jar, you are giving each kid the same amount of love, the same amount of attention. A projector's jar is huge. So just because you've given each kid the same amount of love, the same amount of attention, the projector has a bigger jar. So just kind of think about that for a second. When it um, when you think about it, my projectors as, um, why did I not do that? Okay, did y'all do that for me? If you are a projector, please put that in the chat. I don't know why I didn't say that. Um, I know I've got Jess. Caitlin, your projector. Okay. Let's see here. Yes. Kelly, you got Kelly. Your daughter and yourself are both projectors. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I want you guys to think about that, especially when it came to you in childhood, right? It's like your siblings could have been different aura types. Um, you guys could have very much have had the same feelings of love from your parents, the same attention from your parents, but um, it may not have been fulfilling. And that's just because you guys hold a bigger jar. You guys are looking at the world with a completely different place of lens, right? My projectors are needed. I need my projectors. Jonas is eco. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Oh, crap. I got to go back Hi. and fix this. All right. Hang on one second. Stay right there. Stay right there. I got to go back and fix this. I don't know why it wanted to hide my other pages. I did not mean to do that. Manifestors, generators, my mini gen. Where are y'all? Okay. Stop, Rose. Okay. Let's see. I think I fixed it. Okay, we'll just start here. Oh, come on. Okay. Let me get my other one up. Okay. All right, and y'all can see that. Sorry. I don't know why that was hiding. Okay. All right. So next up, we've got our Manny Gens, right? So this is my hybrids. We are a cross between a manifester and a generator. So if you are a Manny Gen, put that in the chat. So I know who we got here. Girlfriend, how do you do this? Awesome. Got Christina, Miss Bettina. Ah, yes. Okay. So we got one, two, three, four. You can't see my screen. Purple. Is it because of like the white lettering? Yeah, okay. Let me see if I can zoom in. I don't know why it's that color too. I wonder if I could change it real quick. Oh, don't do that. Feels like you're doing too much. 
talking too much and you're doing too much. Come on. Okay. All right. So manifesting generators. The difference in this is that um, with projectors and the manifestors is that we do have the defined sacral center. And typically with a manifesting generator, it is directly connected to a defined throat center. Um, so this is what allows us to um, have a lot of things on our plate, right? We want to do it all. Um, this is kind of what makes our <laughs> resume full, right? Like we want to be doing all the things at one time and we're meant to. Um, so I always thought that it was, you know, this curse that I inherited from my dad was that <laughs> I wanted to be like the jack of all trades, right? Like when I worked in a restaurant, I started out as a host and I think I went through every position working in that restaurant ended up being a bartender. Um, and really and truly it's just ultimately how we are made. It's ultimately how we are supposed to operate in this world, right? So we make up 33% of this population. Um, and again, we have that defined sacral, that defined throat. Um, we're builders, um, but we're also known as builders who express because we tend to do a lot things a lot faster um, being this hybrid of a generator and a manifester. So, um, a generator is a generator because they have that defined sacral center, but a mani gen, um, we also have again, a motor center that is connected to the throat. Um, and this is the motor connection to the throat that makes our manifester trait. So, <laughs> Yes, that's exactly correct. Um, and so what I was going to say, manifesting generators, what's really good to know about how we can manifest in our life is to see what centers you have connected to your throat and ultimately how you can use that as your strategy and authority as well, right? So um, we are very restless. We're also ready to engage. So we kind of get this spark in life. We kind of get this amped up energy when we are engaging with people, engaging, engaging with the right people, right? Um, and you may notice this. You may notice like after a phone call with someone that's just like, you know, um, very much bond with all positivity, you're kind of amped up, you're excited. Um, as well as we need freedom and flexibility to reach new heights. Um, again, so we have this independent side of us, and then we also have this generator, builder, doer side of us as well. Um, and it's really important that we, many gens, um, practice patience. Um, we're also waiting to respond by listening to our gut center. So very important, again, that our manifestor side is informing people, as well as our generator side, we're kind of waiting to um, receive that response. Um, and that's going to allow our sacral center, our gut center to kind of give that answer for us as to where we need to go to move forward. Patience, you say, yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> I'm like, what is that? I don't know what that is. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Now I got to find my generators. Generators. Where are my generators in the chat? Do we have any generators? Generators. Um, Frankie, okay. 
Yep, you guys have that defined sacral, but neither of this center nor any of the other motor centers are connected by that active throat. Okay, so your design uh, is not to initiate. You are kind of here to wait to respond and get going. So this, and I like to take all of our aura centers in a way, your generator as well, okay. Um, in kind of like an entrepreneurial form, right? It's like, how is a generator supposed to be a boss in life if you can't initiate, right? So one example I like to give is especially being in an entrepreneur-esque situation where we are um, in a social media world, right? Is that you are engaging with life where you're kind of setting up your social media to um, allow yourself to respond to people. So Instagram, for example, Instagram is awesome with the story concept of like, you can post questions up there or um, you can create something within your kind of like realm of what you do to where um, you have people like engaging with your social media, because there's a way for people um, to either answer something for you. Now it's giving you that open door to respond, to kind of give your wisdom, your intellect with whatever you do. Um, and you're not out there kind of doing like the cold call type thing, right? So generators, like when I say cold call, right? How does that make you feel? More so of like... Um, calling it for a to-go order or making a doctor's appointment, right? Is this kind of like, ooh, with your energy because it's forcing an initiation. Um, whereas if you kind of set it up where it can be more of like an intellect response, stress, yes, hate, yes, hated that part of sales. Because mm -hmm. you are definitely meant to do the responding. Um, so any way you can find something where you're kind of setting that up, kind of getting your intellect because now people are more interesting. I cringe. I don't like to ask for things. Yes. Yes. Well as the Manny Gens, right? We can do it all by ourselves. But you have to think about it in this way when it comes to the projectors in your life. Your projectors need to be valued. So you have to you have to do that invite for them, right? <laughs> because <laughs> we will we will we will get to a point of just burnt out like um our energizer bunny is like smoking now because we just overran it because we're not asking for help um but when you listen to that gut and you really recognize that sensation um and very much helps with your intuition as well, right? It's just kind of listening. Like what, what is your first like involuntary reflex? What's like that first sound you make when it comes to answering like a yes or no question, right? Then you're gonna kind of begin to attend to this sensation. Um, and it's really your built-in indicator. That sacral center is your indicator to let you know um, what route to take when it comes to any opportunities or any type of answering yes or no. So test yourself. So the next time someone's asking you something, be aware. You know, you might be waiting for like an instantaneous response, um, but don't allow that to kind of distract where you're supposed to listening to that gut. If you have an emotional center, so if your authority on your um, human design chart is a emotional authority you guys kind of have to let that um emotion ride out first okay because your emotion center is going to be its first response to everything so if you guys look at your chart and you have this emotional authority um pay attention to how your emotions respond first to these questions then allow that gut to give you that answer, okay? Um, reflectors. I really, truly think, I know some of you have reflector children, 
Um, but I have yet to kind of have a reflector in this space. So, um, but just to let you know, they do make up 1% of the population. Um, as you can see on their chart, they have no centers defined. Um, they will have gates. They will have gates defined. Um, but they're like a mirror in this world, right? They reflect everything. They reflect everybody else's energy around them. And they literally have to wait for a moon cycle. Whereas, you know, emotional, we're waiting for the riding out the wave, right? Um, our sacral center is instant. Our, um, our spleen center. So if you have that intuition spleen authority, um, yours is immediate. If not before you even hear the question. Um, reflectors, they're waiting a whole moon cycle. Uh, just to kind of reflect and see what energy belongs to them and what does not. Um, let me see. Help sometimes won't because it requires me to initiate. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. It does. It requires like that first initiation. Um, but now it's setting, it's kind of like setting you up now to um, respond. And then you're going to kind of notice this is where your energy is now going to be able to like become amped up. Right. Um, again, so reflectors, they mirror those around them, right? They're like masking, um, and very much important for them of, to be aware of like who they admire, who they were, who they respect. Um, and really take like a full moon, full lunar cycle to allow these reflections to um, ultimately show um, what belongs to their energy and what doesn't. All right, so strategy is how you are designed to interact with the external stimulus. Strategy is. Um, your interaction where authority is your decision-making process. So the reason you'll often hear um, them spoken together is because um, determined by your energy centers, these two are probably the most important things to um, experiment with when it comes to human design, um, as well as kind of see how your energy um, works best. So when you feel more drained and we, when your energy feels more amped, right? So manifestors, you're here to get things started, right? You're here to inform us. Um, and this is ultimately determined by your throat center. You are here to utilize your throat center and have this like direct connection um, because you have the most unique ability to initiate in a way that no other type can. Um, this is why it's very important for you to rely on your throat center and ultimately really determine how comfortable you feel expressing yourself through your throat center, through your voice, right? Um, as well as the listening aspect of it, right? This is why manifestors get so angry when they don't feel like they're being heard because our throat chakra is also in connection with our ears. So um, listening as well as being listened to. Um, starting projects is, um, you know, what can really ramp you up. Um, but very important that you are letting people know what's going on and you're not asking for permission. Okay. You don't have to ask for permission, but you're letting people know what's going on. <laughs> um, let's see here. And your signature theme manifestors is peace. So when you feel peace, that's when you know you're in that ebb and flow. That's when you know you're, you're, you're doing what you're supposed to do. You're in alignment with your true purpose.
Projector, again, a strategy. Projectors guide the response, right? They're here to direct others. Um, and they're waiting. I don't want to say wait for an invitation, right? You're waiting for your value. You're waiting to be valued, right? You're waiting for that phone call from the people that value what you bring to the table and now you're needed, right? Um, essentially going after the things that you want in, is the best way and it's going to be the only way to achieve your, achieve your goals is not. Um, you know, this is why it's difficult for these projectors to live in such a generator world because we have always been told, like, if you want it, you got to, you got to go after it. Um, you got to, uh, you know, just get up and go, 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 go. That does not work. Projectors, you're going to get what you want by simply taking your foot off the gas and allowing everything to fall in place. Um, because your strategy is not about chasing the projects. It's more of investing your time and your energy into things that light you up. And when you're doing this, this is when you kind of notice that everything just falls into place. And it's hard, right? It's hard because everybody around you is doing the get up and go, go, go. Um, and very much you want to amplify that. Um, so really, really, really important that you are investing your time and energy into things that, um, into things that bring you value. Yes. It's not an invitation. It's for, it's a waiting to be valued. Absolutely. Let's see here. We may not have time for profiles today because I want you guys. We're going to at eight. So authority. This is your decision making process. So um, put in the chat if you are a emotional authority. Um, you guys are riding the wave. Time is your medicine. Um, there may be times where you got to sleep on it. As a generator introvert, how do I balance that? Um, balance what, Tanya? As a generator introvert. Oh, you mean like balancing? Like in, in an interaction, maybe? What do you mean? How do you balance what as a generator introvert? But yes, emotional authority. You are trusting the right decisions are the ones that feel good over time and not just in that moment. So my emotional authority, I like how you said that, emo authority. You said that generators wait to respond. Um, yes. So I wouldn't necessarily say like wait to respond, but if there's a way that you can um, set it up, to where now you're using the most of your intellect and energy in the response frame, right? So I wouldn't invest all of your energy and input into kind of like that first initiation cold call, right? You, as a generator introvert, can set it up, but you want all of the majority of your energy to go into the response aspect of it. So when there are times where you can't wait to initiate, um, if you have to do the initiation, don't spend a lot of ample amount of energy. Put a little bit in, whatever you get back is to allow you that open space of the using your knowledge and using your intellect to response because that's what's going to allow your energy to, um, that's gonna allow your energy to um, be used in the right way. You utilizing your energy in the right way. <laughs> um, let's see again. So splenic authority, do I have any splenic authorities? This is your intuition. That's your, that small whisper, right? Um, and you guys are actually here to kind of act on it immediately. 
um, you really want to honor it. You really want to trust it. Um, and even though it's kind of like immediate, um, it's very important that you kind of still take time and space alone to quiet down and connect with your intuition. Um, so that way you are becoming more in tune and having more clarity through like that quiet whisper of intuition. You have to trust it. Um, sacral, sacral authority. Um, these probably a lot of my Manny gens and my generators in here. Um, you're here to kind of find the shortcuts to mastery. Okay. Um, you, we're here to kind of inform and respond, right? Um, let's see here. Environmental sacral. Yes. So, um, talk decisions out with people and, you know, not necessarily seeking advice from others, but to connect the knowing that comes through your own voice when you say it out loud. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that. I kind of noticed that, especially with like the beginning of my spiritual awakening is when I was talking the things out that I was experiencing, it became more clear. It was like providing clarity. Um, the right decisions are the ones that make you happy. The ones that are um, allowing you to express yourself more authentic authentically. Um, yes, be the influencer, not the influence. Yes. I like that. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I don't know. Usually the other last three are pretty rare, but does any anyone in your chart have an ego, authority, or a self-projected or an environmental? If not, I will save that. No. Okay. I didn't think so. So, because I don't have time to go over it today, this entire profile analogy of the house is in the human design channel. I will make sure that I will go um, pin it for you guys and you guys can just have easy access to kind of look over um, what the house chart um, is showing you within your profile and um, how your profile matches up with that. Um, see, does anyone have any questions before I get to my surprise? Thank you, Jess. Yes, so if you guys are interested in booking a personal reading with me, a human design reading, um, my website right there, Jess just put out, um, you can go there and book a reading with me and we will be going over everything. So the <laughs> three things we covered today um, will be included in that reading alongside of the rest of the 10 things that human design goes over. Um, I love, love, love reading your human design charts. I love reading what you want to, you know, focus on in life, focus on more, but Coming soon, y'all. I just discovered that our human design chart completely changes in our sleep. So if you notice, we start with nine centers when we're awake, when we are asleep, which is why this chart is looked at um, horizontal. When we are asleep, we actually go down to five centers. As well as when we are in the dream realm, when we are exposing our energy to our environment, when we are asleep, we change auras, we change types. Um, the majority of us will actually turn into reflectors. I found out, yes, I know, I'm telling y'all, when I found this out, I was like, no, there's no way. I turn into a generator. So I go from a manifesting generator to a generator, meaning I literally don't sleep when I sleep. <laughs> Reflectors were open. This is why Jenny and I talk about in the channel, 
why we're probably more meant to sleep by ourselves, why it kind of made sense that our grandparents and our great grandparents had their own beds, right? We're meant to sleep alone. <laughs> we're meant to sleep alone. Very, very interesting stuff, y'all. I'm really excited to bring this to the channel, bring this into a presentation. So again, if you guys have any questions for me, please message me. Right. Yeah. It's, 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 I can't even begin the things I've been learning this week about a dream chart. It's insane. But if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, if you would like to have a human design reading, um, please head to my website. It's link there. And um, love to work with you.